Hey, what's good? What's good? We are back. Another episode of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, uh, we're going to bring in a special guest. He's the current ranked uh, number one featherweight in BKFC. He has a pro record of four and one. Let's bring on the one and only Brandon Superman Allen. B, what's good, man? What's going on, Behelman? Look like you just got off of, uh training right now. Yes, sir. I'm in the office right now as we speak. Just got done. Last one in the office. Where you at? You at shift right now? You got home sweet home. Sure. First man in, last man out. Yes, sir. For the night. For the night. I, uh, I ain't going to take up too much of your time, man. I know you probably want to get back to the crib and relax with the family and whatnot. Um, let's start with your amateur MMA experience. What was that like for you? Um... It was great. It was great. Um, coming in at five and two, I feel like for me, MMA, it was um, too much on my body. Okay. It was from the wrestling, the kickboxing, the Muay Thai, the jiu-jitsu. Those guys that actually go out there and do it day for day, man, kudos, man. That's a lot. It's a lot. And, and to go to work, that's a lot. It's a lot. So um, that's why I made the transition over to Bare Knuckle. Now, how did you get into Bare Knuckle? Did they, like, come to the uh, do an event near you, and then you saw it and got in, and, like, I want to do that? No, it was um family. All the family was doing it. I got Dave doing it, Jared doing it. Okay. Uh, Martin Brown was doing it. So it was like Crystal was doing it. So it was like, bro, why are you not doing it? So I was like, all right, let's do it. So they brought me on, and it was just, it been nothing but love ever since. I, I, can't, I can't lie, I love it. So what was that transition like for you? Was it, it was easy? It wasn't, it wasn't. Um, I came in thinking that bare knuckle was just, just boxing. I thought it was okay. just boxing. Um, and that's how I got my first loss. Um, I came in thinking that it was just boxing and it's not that. It's his own totally different own sport. So I had to transition over to that. And um, I learned how to trust my coaches and my corners so much better, you know, put my my life in real deal in their hands while I'm in there. So um, I learned a lot. So my first loss was, I can honestly say that was the best thing that happened for my career because um, it helps me learn how to listen to the corner so much better and um, just know how to bite down on that mouthpiece and go forward and do what you need to do. Now, yeah, because I was going to ask you on your first loss was a little bit of inexperience <laughs> going on. Yeah, man, it was – um. That was my first time ever being cut. Like, okay. I'm in the corner. I'm Jihad talking to me. I'm, I keep looking at my hand. I'm like, bro, like, I'm bleeding from my <laughs> face right now. Like, <laughs> he's like, you listening? I'm like, yeah, but you don't see that. <laughs> it was bad. But um, guy missed weight. Um, I think he missed weight by, like, 12 pounds. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he missed weight by, like, 12 pounds. We supposed to fall at, like, 55. He, uh, he missed weight by, like, 12 pounds. So they was like, hey, man, if you want the fight to happen, what you going to do? I'm like, bro, I hydrate. So I hydrate. I, um, I gained a couple pounds, so he was only nine pounds out. So I'm like, hey, cool. I'm like, let's do it now. So um, we goes out the next day, and um, I can feel I can feel the pressure. I can feel the, the power that was behind those punches for, from him being bigger. But at the same time, no excuse. I should have been more experienced in the fight. I was worrying about cuts and nicks and, you know, I was worrying about the wrong thing. So if I, if we ever ran that fight back, I know for a fact, hands down, I'll watch it. Now, what do you think is like a big difference between MMA and bare knuckle that probably gets overlooked? Um, not having gloves and not being able to take down kicks the just to have is just me and you just standing up throwing hands. That's all we have. Um, and not to have that cushion um, is a big factor. It's a very big factor because a lot of people don't understand that bone on bone contact is so much different than having that thin piece of padding in between those gloves to help you out. Now, when you fought Steve O'Morris, I saw in the interview where he said it was tough fighting you because y'all was friends. Were you looking at it that way too? Um, to be honest with you, no, I wasn't. 
I really wasn't. Um, I was on a hunt for revenge to rep- uh, to prove myself for my first loss. So I knew for a fact, and he was he was the, he was ranked number four. Um, he was the number four contender. So I knew for a fact, like he's coming in off of two big wins, two knockouts, like they trying to feed me to the wolves right now. So I'm mm. like, you know, let's do it. I'm like, I know for a fact, I know my game. We worked, we worked very hard within that year. It took a year layoff, and we came back to the drawing board, and we have been nothing but great ever since. So, shout out to all my coaches for that. So, yeah, it's just been that kind of game. Now, you had a comeback win BKFC 47 versus Seth Schaefer. Like, how do you feel like you were able to overcome after you got knocked down? Um, with the Seth fight. It was my footing, and we talk about it in the gym. Um, when he had the um, the overs, so I'm right there while he's hitting the body. I'm like, you know, let me just pull out very hard and throw a big shot. And um, I squared up. I don't know why, but I put both of my feet. If you ever look at the video again, I squared up, hips straight up, straight ahead, and I tried to pull back. Once I pulled back, the momentum of me pulling back. And him coming off, I got to give it to him. He came off. He hit me clean on the top of my head. Um, both of those things together sat me down. That was the yeah. first time I have ever been sat down in my career. So kudos to him. My shout outs to him, man, for that, because that was the first time I've ever been sat down. And it was an eye opener, a very big eye opener. So I'm like, you know, I got to get out. I got to push the pace. I got to be serious. And that's why in the corner I told Hart, I said, hey, I got to go out there and get that back. And, um, that's why I went out there, touched him clean, and we got it over with. Now, how good is your cardio? Like, I know cardio is a big deal in BKFC. Hey, I got the best footwork in the game. So if you want to go all five or all six, we can do that. That's perfectly fine. We don't okay. we don't train for knockouts. We train to be great for every round. Every round is judged separately. So with that being said, we'd be perfect for every round. I mean, we are perfect. So that's what we train for. Now, the main reason I wanted to interview you was you, you seem to be getting overlooked a lot for the title shots. What do you think that's about? Um, I feel like it's following. I feel like it's following. It could be something else when it comes down to promotion. Maybe they want to see me do a little bit more. I don't know. You know, I'm not promotion. But for my defense, I can say I have beat a number one rank. I have beat a, uh, the number four ranked contender when he was number four. Um, I have the best resume when it comes down to the 145 division. I have nobody I have ever fought has an upside down record when I fought him. They was undefeated when I fought him. Um, I beat a high prospect coming off, coming off of a big win in South Carolina in his own backyard. Trevor Loken when he beat um, Brimage. Okay. Um, who else? Seth, three-time, uh, one-time champion over in the other organization, but three wins, three knockouts. I, I don't know what else they want from me. I'm on a four-fight stop spree, so let's keep do you, moving. Do we think it's going to take, like, you fighting Howard Davis or El Gallo or something? <laughs> um. Anybody from the all-in management, no no disrespect at all, but anybody from the all-in <laughs> management, they don't want to fight me, man. Um, unless it's for a title, they, they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. Um, and both of them are from all-in, right? Howard yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Hats off. I will always show my respect to HD. Got to show it to him. Um, he has been nothing but humble and a cool dude ever since I met him. Um, so hats off to bro. But El Gallo, you can kiss my ass. Um, I'm I'm on your ass like back pockets next time I see you. Like, I want that fight. I really want that fight. I want the El Gallo fight, but I know most likely they're not going to give me that one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever is in store, I have big news coming up pretty soon. I can't talk about it. It's in the works. So in like the next two, maybe two and a half weeks, I'm going to be posting some big news. So. I can't wait. Well, I know you said uh, something about posting Kai Stewart. You'd rather fight the chicken boy, not the man of the steel. Um, that didn't get no reaction from El Gallo? It did. It did. Um, 
he called himself the cash cow now because of you know he can yeah. sell out. He got he got a lot of followers and fans and stuff. But like I told him, followers and fans don't help you in the ring. It don't at all. And as you see, what just happened? Yeah, it know, helped last um, match. It it was horrible. It was a horrible fight. And um, for him to call himself the cash cow, I, I wouldn't. I don't see you that way because your career is not going to be that long uh, fighting like that. So God bless and I hope you the best in your career. But if you ever cross my path, I'm going to stop you. I know for a fact I'm going to stop you. Um, when I get to Kai, I'm going to stop Kai. Um, HD, number but love and respect, but I will stop HD. Um, Howard, uh, what's his name? James Brown. I stopped James Brown, but most likely one of those guys are about to fall off the roster very soon because they're about to fight. So, yeah. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about the little guy, uh, Jimmy Rivera. Jimmy I'll, Rivera, yeah. Yeah, I will piss last too. So I don't know. Whatever they want to give me, whatever they want to put me, I don't care. Um, I just want to get back in the square circle because that's where I belong. I am king. I am the 145 king. I've been saying it for the longest. I'm just uncrowned. That's all it is. Yeah, and it would almost make sense for El Gallo to probably fight you because he's going to have to try to prove himself to try to get back to a title shot, right? Right, and I love – we can do it in his hometown if you want. If you don't want to leave Miami, you don't have to. You don't have to come to Tampa. I will come to you. I promise you I'll come with my best dancing shoes, and we can do it. Whatever you want to do. So, I, I, I predict that fight being over before the third that i i just know it so um you said you got new news coming soon so i'm guessing that'll be a new fight soon yes sir yes sir yes sir now found, and they say you can't catch a uh, duck with dog food but we did so <laughs> we caught them and we're about to string them up and do what we need to do how like impatient can it be like having to wait for fights in between fights like it's been oh, almost uh, almost um, over a year now right it has been over a year last time i fought was in july in lakeland um this has been the worst thing ever for me um because i love the lights i love being under the lights but at the same time this has been the best thing for me i have been able to grind in so many different areas of the fight game and i have sharpened so many different tools so i can't wait to show them and put them on display um, I feel like they just made it worse for themselves when it comes down to fighting because you have put me on the back shelf and I just became better. So I just ready to show off my skills. Well, it seems there's a lot of politics with some of these fights not going on. I mean, Redneck and Perry probably should have fought already. Uh, you definitely like if, even when you go to Knuckle Town official rankings, they got you number one as well. So when I see both rankings clearly have you number one it's like what are we waiting on i mean i get it y'all want money fights um followers yeah. but you got to put the best fighters against the best fighters to get the best product don't you think that's how i feel i feel like we're in this business to um prove that we're the best like i haven't even told promotion that i'm willing to even take a pay cut if that's the case to put me on um i take the pay cut so i can prove that i am the best i i have no doubt in my heart um, that I would not be king. I will be king. So I'm just waiting patiently, but we got news. So like I say, in about the next two weeks, I'll be able to put something out, um, put something out there and let everybody know what it is. Now, have you been um, like careful about the opponents that you want to fight too? Because I mean, like we said, you're ranked number one. I mean, you want to fight somebody that's a worthy opponent, right? Always. Always, I always want to fight somebody that brings something to the table. Um, don't get it wrong. If if this if the organization gives me, um, I don't want to say the word because they told me I can't say it anymore. Um, <laughs> um, I don't want to say that. How can I say it? If they give me a guy that's lower ranked than I am, um, okay. By sure, I take the fight and I do what I have to do because that's what they're giving me. But if I can, if I'm able to pick, by all means, you'll know for a fact if I pick him because he's gonna be a high ranked fighter. He's most likely gonna be undefeated and most likely ranked. But you know, we're gonna get what we get with the organization. Now, I just interviewed uh, team member Jessica Borga, who I think is officially my new favorite female um, fighter. 
in bare <laughs> knuckle. He crazy. And um, you know, I was just asking her, like, what's the odds that we have about like four members, maybe five members, all ha- holding a belt here soon? Um, give it a year, year and a half. A year, year and a half, we will have we will have four titles in this gym. Guarantee we shoot them, we shoot them for five. We shoot them for five. Um, we already have two guaranteed. I know I'm gonna snag mine. Borgia's is gonna snag hers, and they gotta make a weight class. Well, they already yeah, made a weight they gotta fill in her weight class still. Yeah, so they still have to um, make a belt for Crystal at 135. So um, it's looking lovely. Uh, I love the team. I love the environment. I love everything that comes with my team. So it's a family. I, I just don't see it as just a boxing gym. This is actually family. We get together, barbecues, birthdays. This is okay. actually family. So that's why we blend so well and do so well in the gym and strive like we do. Now, I always hear family atmosphere at BKFC. Now, does that family atmosphere you have in shift, is it also in the BKFC like everybody says? Yes. Yes. It's, um, this is a family business for us. This yeah. is a real deal of family business for us. So we all put our thinking caps on together. We call each other. We text each other. Hey, game plans, this schemes, listen to coach. Don't do this. Don't do that. Remember this. Remember that. Like, you know, and afterwards, guess what? We're going to have some fun. We're going to be together. We're going to laugh. We're going to joke. Go get on the boat. It's, it's just a family. Like over here, if you ever came and visit, you'll see it's just a family environment. Now, how much is it? Like you said, you're calling out all in. How much is like the different teams? Is that a competition? Oh my gosh. Um, guaranteed that we got five different, uh, different speeds of competition in here. So, and even the women going to bring it. You got to have your A game. Definitely fucking crystal her hands are like fucking lightning um and borgia hit like a a fucking truck so it's tough it's tough dealing with those guys um and with jared he can punch you from across the room and it feels like a train and when it comes down to dave he's just he's i gotta give it to him he's dave Dave. yeah (laughs) he's dave he's gonna um he's gonna put you where he needs you to be for himself He's an all-around great fighter. I um, really appreciate Lil Bro for what he does to the gym and what he brings to the gym. So, and that's all my teammates. So, yeah, Redneck is like my favorite uh, bare knuckle fighter. Like once I started get into it, something about Redneck that just like yo, I like this guy. Now he's got yeah. his fight in Spain. Is the whole squad gonna be out there? Um, majority of the squad is gonna be there. The rest of us gonna be back here. Um, throwing a big fight party for him because we you know you got to keep the fans and the followers happy. Yep. Well, I ain't gonna take up too much of your time, man. I know you ready. You know, get back to the crib, man. After a long day. Before we go, anybody you want to shout out? Um, Shift. Shout out to Shift. That's the family. That's the family. That's the family. Got to say it repeatedly. Um, without them, I wouldn't be here. So, shout outs to the team. Shout out to the coaches. Superman flying high and, and fight news coming soon. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out, man. And we need to get that uh bare knuckle and BKFC fan base out there demanding that um Kai Stewart match. He's over there I, on celebrating Kai, a little. He's over there celebrating like crazy right now. So he is, he is. But you know, you only can run for so long. His excuse yeah. was his excuse. I didn't fight an I, I didn't fight a rank contender. I already fought a rank contender. He said, I need a better resume. My resume is better than yours. You beat a Derek Gates and Derek Gray. And yeah, come on, man. You don't beat guys that, that shouldn't even be fighting right now. So um, I can't wait. My turn will come and I will show the world that I am the king. I am the 145 king. I right, well, I appreciate you taking time out your busy schedule, man. And you're a friend of the show. So anytime you want to come back on, man, got any announcements, please do. Oh, I, you're going to be the first one then. I got you. I appreciate it, man. All right, man. Appreciate it. Superman flying. All right. You have a nice night, man. Well, there you go. Uh, Brandon Superman Allen. He has some new news coming soon. Uh, hopefully, he'll come up on here and give you all the word on that real, real soon. Uh, can't wait to see his new fight. 
it's been uh well over a year now. I think it's been since July of last year that he fought. Um, definitely getting overlooked for the title shot with Kai Stewart. I mean, you've had Louis Lopez get the title shot, Howard Davis. I mean, even though Howard Davis, I mean, it was well deserved. He, he's a lot of fights under his belt. Um, El Gallo kind of was ranked under Brandon Allen, and he kind of got pushed up because he's a, a money fight and he sells a lot of tickets in Miami. But yeah, there you know, Kai Stewart is gonna have to uh, pick his next opponent soon, and hopefully, it's gonna be Brandon Superman Allen. Um, once again, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Paul Pickett Podcast. Peace, and we out.